This is a Chihuahuan pocket mouse that I named Sweetie Pumpkin because she's so sweet. Um, I thought I'd upload a video of her on YouTube since I haven't found any videos on the internet of this species of animal at all. Uh, so I thought I'd tell you guys a few things about the Chihuahuan pocket mice. Uh, she's a heteromyid rodent, so she's technically not a mouse at all. They just call them that because they look kind of like mice. Um, a larger, more well-known uh, heteromyid species would be the kangaroo rat, which is uh, just kind of a bigger version of her and stuff. <laughs> Sorry, she's getting a little antsy. Um, she's more closely related to gophers and um, beavers and other uh, North American rodents than she is to mice, like a lot more closely related. Um, and uh, heteromyids are specially adapted uh, to live primarily in deserts, uh, which is where she came from. She came from the Trans-Pecos re region of Texas. I'm gonna put her on my shoulder so she'll calm down. <laughs> all right, um, like most, if not all heteromyids, she probably doesn't drink water at all throughout her life. Uh, ugh. I've had Sweetie Pumpkin um, for well over a year and she's never had water during that entire time. Um, whether they might drink water when they're pregnant uh, or very young, I don't know. Um, since they're mammals, they do have to produce milk for their young. Um, so I don't know what they're like during their pregnancy. Um, interestingly, they don't actually uh, eat water-rich vegetation either. Uh, like cactus, for example. Um, they don't really eat much of it. Uh, some will, some won't. Um, Sweetie Pumpkin has only eaten dry seeds throughout her entire life. Uh, they get all the water they need from metabolic water, which is the small amount of water that is a byproduct of the chemical breakdown of starches, oils, and to some extent proteins. Uh, most of the starches and the oils, though. Uh, humans, for comparison, need ten times more water than that is that is present in metabolic water. Um, but they have evolved to live off just this tiny amount of metabolic water, so they never have to drink or rely on foods like cactus in the desert. <clears throat> they don't need it. So that's my favorite thing about them. Uh, pocket mice are also known for having very large hind legs and back feet and very tiny front paws, which we might be able to get a hint of right here. See those giant feet? And you can barely see her tiny front paws, <laughs> uh, which they mostly use just to uh, shovel dirt and shove seeds in their mouth. Um, uh, they have those large feet, uh, which they use as their primary mode of locomotion, so they can move by hopping very, very fast, and they can jump very high. Um, in captivity, though, uh, they're surprisingly good at just walking on all four legs. Uh, they seem to choose that in captivity. In the wild, they do a lot more hopping. Um, but yeah, they're surprisingly good with their oddly proportioned legs of <laughs> walking pretty slowly uh, at more of a normal gait. Um, another thing that I've personally observed uh, about their feet is that they actually use them to communicate. At least this species does, the uh, Chihuahuan pocket mouse. Um, I was surprised to, uh, to observe that. I wasn't sure what I was seeing when I first saw it because none of the literature includes any information on that, uh, but it has been recorded and studied in kangaroo rats, which, like I said, are a uh, larger heteromyid in the same family as these pocket mice. Um, 
It's called, uh, the communication method is called foot, foot stomping, um, foot drumming, sorry, foot drumming, uh, which is really kind of a misnomer. It doesn't sound like foot drumming. It's, it's so incredibly fast that it's, uh, sort of a buzzing sound, um, that you would expect more like, like, from an insect, um, and... What studies have shown with kangaroo rats is that different frequencies of buzzing uh, appear to mean different things. They'll use different frequencies for different animals, uh, which is kind of weird since uh, no one's really sure what exactly they're trying to communicate when they're using their foot drumming uh, towards other animals, it, because they use it with, within their own species, but also towards predators, towards um, other animals they share their burrows with. Uh, pretty much anything. Uh, no one's quite sure what that means, but um, seems to be their primary mode of communication. Um, Sweetie Pumpkin is probably a female, because I've never observed any testes. Uh, most of the year, though, males and females look the same. Uh, they have no visible testes except during the mating season, uh, and specifically when the individual is prepared to mate. Otherwise, uh, for the males, the testes uh, are internal and not visible from the outside. Um, the other Tyrone pocket mouse I have is a male, and initially I was interested in mating them to see if they drink water um, when they're pregnant and what their, what their young are like and what their mating is like. Uh, but I've learned that their mating is incredibly violent um, because they're strictly solitary and they're much more likely to fight than to mate. And even if they do, um, my girlfriend has read that they can lose limbs and tails uh, in the fights. So I decided that, that was not something that I wanted to uh, that I wanted to experience. So. Their mating remains a mystery to me. Uh, annual turnover for this species is around 5%. So this one is probably very old for a pocket mouse. She's well over a year. Uh, we don't know how old she was when we found her, uh, but she was the oldest of the Chihuahuan pocket mouse that, mice that we found. And uh, she was very slow and uh, very docile. So she was probably somewhat elderly when we found her. Um, I give my pocket mice plenty of tubes to live in and clay to cover up those tubes and customize their tunnels. In the wild they only spend four hours a night above the surface uh, to conserve water loss through respiration. They seal off their tunnels completely to keep them more humid than the air above. Um, but some of the pocket mice that I have have chosen uh, in captivity to be active much more often than four hours a day, um, since the humidity in the room is pretty high compared to the desert, and uh, they have ample food, um, so they can be as active as they want, and some of them choose to be, some of them don't. Uh, True to their nature, they like to store all that extra food that I give them in caches underground. Adding to their caches um, and relocating their caches seems to be their favorite activity um, that they like to do in their cages. Um, they move it around by putting it, uh, putting large amounts of seeds, um, probably about a third of their body weight, I would guess, around, um, which they can fit into fur-lined cheek pouches, uh, which are separate cavities from their mouth. Um, that's what they're called pocket mice. They have, I'm not gonna be able to get them on video because, uh, because flipping her upside down and pulling her cheek pouches would be uh, uh, too stressful for me to want to do to her right now. Uh, but just trust me, on either side of her mouth, there's two additional cavities on either side, which are fur-lined little cheek pouches 
for storing seeds. Uh, they can store them in there for quite a while and carry them around until they want to bury them. Um, identifying this species of pocket mouse involves looking at its size relative to other heteromyids, its fur, which has some distinctive features, um, where the white patches are on her body. For her, uh, it's underneath, and you this like straight line across the side of her body. Um, and the color of her feet also, the white color, can help identify her. Um, the tuft on her tail is identifies her as a, as a Chihuahuan pocket mouse uh, instead of the many other heteromyid species. Um, despite all this, I would still not be able to distinguish her from one other species called the desert pocket mouse. Uh, the only real reliable way to distinguish them from those would be to look at their skeleton. So the only way to distinguish a live one from a desert pocket mouse uh, would be on where you found it. They live in different places, so if you know where you found it, then you know which one it is. Um, what's also interesting about these is that without looking at it too closely, it's pretty hard to distinguish them from some species of African gerbils which have convergently evolved to look um, very, very similar. Uh, so it's an interesting example of convergent evolution for life in the desert, because African gerbils live in the African desert, and these live in the American desert, even though they're evolved from very different rodents at a very different time. They look very similar. Um, and that's about all I have to tell you <laughs> about these as far as science is concerned. In my opinion, they are scientifically the cutest rodents in the world, thanks to their tufted tails, which she doesn't want me to show you. There's her tufted tail. <laughs> and her very large back feet compared to her tiny front feet. So uh, a very, very interesting animal, very specially adapted to very uh, dry, powdery clay deserts. Um, as long as they can burrow and find seeds, they can survive. So that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching.